to show you how I do my solutions for the first puzzle of the Advent of Code. Um, I, I did Advent of Code several years, um, although not always to the end, but I stopped doing it because I felt like I, it was taking so much of my time and it did not feel like a productive use of my time. Um, so then last year I decided to do something else and instead of doing these puzzles, I did a blog post every day. Um, which which I thought was a, a good use of my time, and I think a lot of good blog posts came out of that. Um, this year I'm not doing the blog posts, um, so kind of this morning, uh, you know, 6 a.m. while I was at breakfast and looking at the first puzzle, I thought, okay, maybe I will do them this year, or at least some of them, um, but try to stream them. I want to get more practice with the streaming thing, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe this way people can learn something. So. Um, I'm here at my desk in Berlin, I'm burning a little candle uh, as long as the Corona winter goes on to give myself and the neighbors some hope. Um, and today we are solving the first advent of code puzzles. So I'm not gonna make the mistake that I made on my second attempt, uh, but I'm gonna switch to this one. Okay, so now you should see my Emacs uh, and my browser. So this is the first advent of code puzzle. Um, now, before we get to that, uh, I just want to show you uh, project setup. So really going to start from scratch, start a new project. Um, this has become so easy in 2020, thanks to Closure CLI and, and Depth Eden. Um, but I know it's something that a lot of people still kind of struggle with. A lot of people still lament starting something from scratch. They would rather, you know, get a template from somewhere because they don't want to think about all that boilerplate. Uh, but I just want to show you like how, how trivial it is um because if you get you know good at doing this it's just so much fun you know you have an idea you you just get started so this is my closure projects directory um i have a, a new project uh template that and so usually i would just sort of you know copy this over or we also have this i think under lambda island new project or something uh, as a template on github um now this is really geared for for libraries, um, so instead I'm just gonna start over from scratch because you'll see you really don't need much. So, okay, this is my new project, um, and first off we're gonna create a Depths Eden, uh, and this is really like strictly all you need for your Depths Eden, just an empty map, which will mean that it defaults to adding source to the class path. Um, now in this case, I'm also going to add resources to the class path because um, we're going to put our uh, puzzle inputs there. And then let me go create those directories. So make their source and make their resources. And then I'm going to open source Lambda Island AOC 2020 puzzle01.clj in Emacs. This should switch to Emacs, create it, yes. Okay, and now I can jack in. So this is just a cider jack in basically, uh, which should give me a REPL, okay, direct connection established. So we have a REPL connected to Emacs. Now, I hardly ever look at that REPL buffer unless I wanna see something, some output that's been printed. Uh, to evaluate stuff, we of course just do it interactive development style, inline, you know, just evaluate stuff here. So that's it. Uh, so we're off to the races. Now let's look what we're supposed to do. So uh, when given a list of numbers, so this is the sample input, we can start with that. When given a list of numbers, we need to find um, two of those numbers that when added together uh, form 2020. Uh, and then we need to multiply those numbers. So easy enough. Uh, so sort of the brute force way uh, would be to just sort of take the, the Cartesian product, right? And that's actually very easy with a for loop. So we want to assign x to a value from input and i y also to a value of input. Uh, 
uh, and then we can sort of use all these magic things that are built into these for loops. We can say when uh, x plus y equals 20, 20, then, well, for now, let's first just return x, y. And there are numbers now. We get all the different permutations in this case. Um, so let's actually, instead of returning these two numbers, let's already go ahead and return the, uh, the product and then stick that into a set so we get rid of the duplicates. And this should be our first solution, 514.579, 514.579, yes. So at least uh, the, oh, can we still get our puzzle input? Where's my puzzle input? Oh, get your puzzle input, okay. Uh, at this point, we can try this with the real input. So this is, of course, a little bigger. And what, what you'll often find with this advent of code stuff is that these naive solutions uh, will just take way too long, will be way too slow when you run them on the real input. So in this case, we get 200 numbers. Um, but spoiler alert, I already tried this and it actually works fine. Um, so, okay, let's see, we should be able to get the resource. I'm gonna uh, use CLJ refactor add missing to add that require. So do we have the puzzle input 01.txt resource? Yes. Uh, and then I can do a line seek over that, except that line seek doesn't expect the URL, it expects a reader, a buffered reader. Now that's easy enough to solve, so we wrap this in reader. Okay, so now we have a sequence of every line in that file. Now I just need to map them to actual numbers, so integer parse int uh, or long parse long. Um, I mean, in this case, they all fit in integers. Uh, closure by default really only uses longs, but of course it can deal with integers fine. Um, so there's our input. And let's see if this still works. And here's a number. And well, I I, you know, I did this already, so I don't know. Yeah, your puzzle answer was okay. So here it shows, so that is correct. Uh, and then the, ex the, the extended version, the, the, the second start version question is basically the same thing, but in this case, we need to find three numbers that add up to 2020 and then multiply them. So that's also easy enough. Uh, let's just add a third number, add them up, multiply them, and starts with 127, starts with 127, ends in 10, yeah. So that's it. So that's it for day one. Uh, hope that was interesting. Guess a couple interesting things. The, the setup with Depths Eden, uh, some some Java IO stuff with the line seek, uh, and then yeah, good use of four. Uh, there's a Lambda Island episode about four. Uh, there's there's it, it's I've really come to appreciate what a powerful macro this is. I know some people find a little bit too much magic. Of course, you can do all the same stuff with you know map and filter and whatever. Uh, but I, I think sometimes this is just super elegant. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Uh, let's see if I come back with uh, with this stuff tomorrow. Have a nice day.